Hello everybody, uh, this is Wade Givens, Senior Staff Agronomist with Farmers Business Network. I hope we're all enjoying a day like this uh, here uh, mid part of April. Uh, but I understand a lot of the parts of the country uh, are still pretty wet and, uh, and still pretty cold. Um, so it's, it's been, like I said, it's been a challenging spring with some of this cold, wet weather. Uh, people worried about getting their corn crop in the ground before some of these prevent plant dates. And plus, you compound that with some of the anxiety around uh, COVID-19. So hopefully, some of the information you get today will help alleviate uh, some of that stress you may be experiencing right now. I know for myself, I'm getting a little stir-crazy, uh, so it's a good chance to get out of the house and uh, get out in the sunshine. But we're going to start the conversation with, with a question. Um, where is the growing point of a corn plant from the time that it's been planted in the soil till about the time it's V4, V5? And the answer to that is it's still below the soil line. And you may be wondering to yourself, why is that important? Well, it's very important if you look at it in the context of, of soil temperature and you know the frost-free days and a lot of these things that help us determine when to put our corn seed in the ground. Uh, so one of the injuries that we can uh, get on our corn uh, due to low temperatures um, is something called inhibitional chilling injury. And I know that's a really long phrase, but what we're really talking about is, is for lack of a better term, frost damage when the seed is still in the ground. And you're going to experience this uh, when the corn's been in the ground 24 to 36 hours and that soil temp has still been in the 41 to 50 degree Fahrenheit uh, range. Um, so if you suspect you've had this kind of injury and it can be compounded with uh, wet cool rains, what you can do is you can dig around uh, for your corn kernels in the ground and look to see if those seeds have swollen and split. Um, that's a pretty good indication that you've, that you've had this kind of injury uh, on your corn acres. Uh, the other thing to look for is if that seed is germinated, um, this inhibitional chilling injury can severely damage uh, that young uh, root. Um, so as it's trying to develop structure and grow, you can sustain some pretty severe damage. The other thing is to look at the minocotyl and if it's deformed. Because what that can do is it can cause that leaf to start to unfurl under the soil and uh, start to rot. So that's something, another watch out to look for if you suspect you've had this kind of injury. Uh, so that's really, if you think about below ground injury, that's uh, what we're really talking about. So probably the one we're most familiar with is the above ground injury, or what we commonly refer to as frost damage. Um, and this is where that growing point of the plant becomes really important. So in most cases, we don't really get hard freezes. Uh, we get some frosts, um, you know, that'll yellow up the plant, and that's one of the symptomologies that'll start to yellow and just kind of look uh, kind of grayish, translucent, um, and you'll start to get that purple flash in the plant. And if you suspect that you've got frost damage, um, you really, the, the best thing you can do is wait three to five days. And I know that's, that's a hard pill for a lot of us to swallow, because uh, typically we're, we're reaching the point where we think it's too late to plant corn. But it's really important to give that plant time to see if it's going to come out of that injury. And one thing you can look for after three to five days is new, new growth in the top of that plant. Um, that's going to be pretty indicative if that plant's going to come on out of that injury. Um, after three to five days, you can start to gently pull on the top of that plant. And if the leaves come out of that whirl pretty easily, that's a real good indication that, that the growing point of that plant has died. And, uh, you need to start looking at uh, potential stand losses. Um, and along those lines, many of the universities have, have published some great information to look at uh, stand loss and uh, how that affects yield. And what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below uh, to University of Nebraska. They've got a really good chart. And also, if you look at a uh, speaking of university data, there's been a lot of data looking at uh, planting dates. Uh, I know a lot of us think that we need to get our corn in, you know, in that late March, uh, April time frame if you live in the Mid-South. Um, but there's some really good data out there um, that shows that if you, if you look all across the country, uh, May 8th, May 9th seems to be that magic number. Um, you can go up to May 9th and still get uh, 95 to 98% um, of the yield potential 
you know, out of that corn crop. If you go past May 9th, you know, that potential starts to drop off pretty rapidly. Um, again, I'll have uh, some university links down in the description to below and below where you can uh, read more about that. I um, also have some great pictures on uh, the type of injuries we've discussed. Uh, but all, as always, if you've got any more questions, please feel free to reach out uh, to your local, uh, local FBN hub. Uh, they've, they're a great resource for product um, and agronomic knowledge, and they can certainly uh, put you in touch with the uh, agronomy FBN staff. So thank you very much.